Hello everyone, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Brianna and welcome, welcome. We're back, baby. We are so back. We are back and better than ever. And holy cow, holy shit, did I take a almost full month, four or five week hi hiatus off of YouTube. And we are gonna get into all about why today. It has been the worst, the worst, start to any year I've ever had in the 27 years of my life. I remember making my goals and getting ready for 2024 and being so excited. Let me tell you, 2024 came in and said, I'm gonna kick your ass and guess what? You're gonna just have to deal. And I was like, really? 2024 was supposed to be my year. We're doing a lot of travel, we're getting married, we've got all the things. And 2024 came in and said, joke's on you sister, cause I'm gonna kick your ass right from the rip. So. We are gonna get into today just a nice big sister hangout, chatty, catch up, where I've been, what's going on, how I'm doing, what's going on in Corey and I's life, and just how 2024 started and what is to come on the channel. I don't know if this is gonna be a long video, if it's gonna be a short video. It's really gonna be me just sitting here catching up, chatting. We're gonna chat about what has been going on, feeling definitely chaotic, but let me tell you the idea of seeing myself in this viewfinder. I almost feel like I'm like blurry, like, do I need glasses? Do so I need to get like I feel like I can see better here? I've got to get used to it again because I literally have not vlogged and been in front of the camera in over a month. Yeah, over a month. So with that, let's start with what's been going, Brianna. Where have you been? Where were you? What is going on? Like where were you the last month? So let's talk about it. So I'm gonna. I also have Mr. Bear here for emotional support down here on my lap. But I'm gonna pull up a calendar and we are quite literally gonna walk through the last month of my life. I'm gonna rewind you all. I literally have my calendar up. We're gonna rewind and we are gonna talk about exactly what has been going on in my life for the last month that has quite literally been the worst and most stressful and hardest month that I have ever encountered See, I feel like I'm already getting emotional. The hardest month I have quite literally ever encountered in my life as a young adult, it was debilitating, it was exhausting, it was sad, it was heartbreaking, it was just all the emotions and all the things in such a short period of time. It was like the universe was just not even kicking us when we were down, but just absolutely beating the literal shit out of us when we were down. So also I'm gonna swear a lot in this video because it is what it is. So if you've got little kiddos around and you've already heard my swearing, maybe this is a video for when you're in bed with a glass of wine or a cup of tea, when your littles are asleep. This is not for the littles, but. All right, so without further ado, let's get into it. So to start, we are going to rewind all the way back to February 12th, which is a Monday, literally a month ago from today. I'm filming this on March 13th. And on February 12th, basically make a long story short, I'm not gonna go into too many of like the nitty gritties and the in-depth details of it because it's not, it's important. It's like important to the story, but it's not, but it's also Corey's like more so lame, so. He didn't sign up to like share a lot of his incidental life things on the internet, but we're gonna just make a long story short. I don't mean to be vague. I wanna be raw and honest. But however, this is just a different kind of situation where basically, long story short, Corey got some really tough news at work on February 12th and he's still working at the company. All things are good, like nothing bad. However, in the moment, it was really scary and it was bad in the moment on February 12th that Corey got some news at work and it sent me absolutely spiraling. I had already had a really traumatic and crazy January with the passing of a really close family friend of ours, being there to support my mom, being here to support our family, driving back and forth to Boston, driving back and forth to Rhode Island. I was already running on empty. I was already walking on really thin ice mentally, emotionally, physically, and all the things. And so this just really was the straw that broke the camel's back and just completely had me spiral. However, this was a really debilitating spiral. I got asked a few months ago, I actually looked back on this, how I struggle with anxiety or if I struggle with depression. And in that question, when I was asked that months ago, I said, I'm really fortunate. I've never struggled with pieces of anxiety. I've never really been someone that has struggled with anxiety or dealt with anxiety. So I would recommend you know, seeking a medical professional or someone in the medical field for help on that because I'm not someone that struggles with it. However, on February 12th, I ended up spiraling for almost, I wanna say two weeks of extreme high anxiety. My first time I'd ever really had anxiety attack. Pan I don't wanna call it a panic attack or an anxiety attack because I don't exactly know what it was. 
All I know is, is that my heart rate for four days straight was at about a 130, 140, like beats per minute. My heart rate was incessant. I was nauseous. I was sensitive to smell. Everything made me terrified. The idea of Corey being at work scared me. Me working scared me. I couldn't focus on anything. And it was probably one of the most debilitating moments that I've ever struggled with in my entire life. And for anyone that has anxiety, for anyone that struggles with anxiety, like, whoa, see, we're already getting emotional. Like, I, like, I see you and, like, I hear you and I feel for you so deep into my bones, into, like, the core of my being because struggling with that episode of anxiety and having this like rapid heart rate and not being able to eat and my mind not turning off was so debilitating and so scary and so overwhelming and just like quite literally so frightening that I will never ever say in a joking manner again like you know oh I'm feeling a little anxiety or like in that joking way like it I, I struggled I struggled so unbelievably hard it was so debilitating I had fallen asleep on the couch later that night my heart I literally could feel as if someone was just like pounding banging on my chest incessantly it was exhausting I was emotionally drained I was crying I couldn't sleep it was like the middle of the day was the only good parts that I had I was laying in bed 24 7 all I thought about was going it's like so sad like all I thought about was like going to bed at night all I wanted to do was sleep because it was the only time that I didn't feel this overwhelming sense of like anxiety and fear and like scared sense in my being and man oh man was it so rough so like now I know let's fast forward a little bit this weekend like that weekend so if you fast forward from February the I'm going back to my calendar here. February the 12th, we were actually supposed to leave on February 15th to surprise Matt and not surprise Carter. Carter and I had planned it. We were supposed to have a friend's weekend and go see Matt and Carter in Canada and we were going to drive up to them and have like a friend's weekend. Carter and I had planned it for like two months. We were looking so, like I was so looking forward to it. Like all I wanted to do was like see her and like hug her and I got so scared of like being away from home and like being away from family and being six or seven hours in Canada internationally, like not being close to a doctor, like if something happened. And I remember like not sleeping the whole night before I was having like, we're getting really real and raw here. Like I was having stomach problems, like super, super sick to my stomach, like in the bathroom all night, all morning, just like high anxiety, freaking out. I was so scared. My anxiety would not go away. Corey's issues were still going on at work. And I texted her and was like, Carter, like, I don't think that we can come. Like, I am so terrified to drive six hours in the car. I'm so scared to be away from home and, like, from a doctor if anything were to happen. So we ended up, like, long story short, canceling going to our friends that we had planned for so long. And we were so excited to surprise Matt. We had, like I said, planned this for months. And, like, we never get to see them unless we go to Disney with them because, of course, they live far away. This is our first time, like, seeing their home and getting to see them in a more relaxed space and meet Stella and Delilah. And, like, we were so excited to be with friends and, like, spend a weekend with friends. And we had to cancel. So long story short, we ended up not going. That was Thursday, Friday. We were at home relaxing. I felt like a little better, but not really. I had a really big crying episode on Friday, just like wishing and like praying that it would just go away because it was day after day after day of incessant heart beating at a, anywhere from a one, 100 to 130, 140. It was ebb and flowing. I couldn't eat anything. All I was eating was popsicles. Food made me nauseous. Anything that like even still like when I touch my like throat here, like my esophagus, I freak out. I don't know. It just made me nauseous. So anyway. We fast forward to Saturday and I said, you know what? I'm gonna go to urgent care. Like maybe I have COVID, maybe I have a sickness, maybe I have a little bit of a bug. I want them to just check my heart and see what's going on. I was feeling a little bit better and I said, you know what, after that, Corey and I will go to Home Goods and Target will get me out of the house. I'll walk around, things will be okay. So that Saturday was February 17th. Corey and I went to urgent care. They ran an EKG on me, which is where they put these little stickers on your like under here like on your wrists on both of your calves underneath like your heart and chest so, like all under here under my boob and like up here on my chest and here and they hook you up to like all these wires Corey was like seeing the person that like you love like hooked up to wires and like waiting in the waiting room he was like was really 
scary. We, I've been in the hospital for a few things before for my stomach, my Crohn's, my colitis, all that nonsense before. However, I think him bringing me to urgent care and like it being about my heart was very different. And so he was really overwhelmed, really nervous. They ran the EKG on me. She asked if I had ever suffered with anxiety, if I had ever been someone that was diagnosed with anxiety, what I had been stressful under, if there was anything that was coming up in my life that was making me stressed. Um, and I said, you know, well, we're planning a wedding. We've had three close family friends and relatives pass in the last six weeks. I've been supporting my mom as it's been really difficult for her and being, you know, the rock for her. That was, that was my job. Like I, I had to be there for her. And, you know, we ended up going into the urgent care and they were basically like, okay, well, do you have any histories of blood clots in your family? And I said, yeah, my dad has suffered with blood clots, you know, 10, 15 years ago when I was in high school. And they were like, okay, well, based on the fact that you have a history of blood clotting in your family, we think it would be best for you to go to the emergency room and just get checked out. We don't think you're having a pulmonary embolism, but we would recommend that you go to the, like, you know, we'd recommend that you go to, you know, the emergency room and just have you checked out. So now I'm sitting in there my heart's racing now i'm like am i having a blood clot like what now i'm like freaked out even more so we call my mom and we're like hey we're going to the emergency room do you want to come with us my mom's like absolutely she throws her clothes on we get in the car they ask me if i need to be taken by ambulance i'm like no I, Corey can drive me like i'm i'm good i promise like i'm okay and we get to the emergency room they check me in immediately because it pertains to my heart so i was on fast track in the emergency room they take my blood pressure, they take my heart rate, and I'm sitting in this monitor, like again, hooked up to some wires, and they were like, have you had any stress? Have you had any, like, you know, thing, big things happen in your life that would raise your heart rate? And I had not externally said directly to Corey that I believe that my stress and my anxiety and my heart palpitations were coming directly from news that he was given at work. However, I didn't want to tell him that because I didn't want him to then have the same thing I was having or to be a finger pointer, like, we're a partnership and so the idea of like me pointing my finger that I was struggling so internally was his fault broke my heart however right as I was about to say what happened Corey like looked at the doctor and was like I got really bad news at work on Monday I think that this is my fault she's planning a wedding our wedding we're traveling a lot this year we have a lot on our plate we've just had three deaths like I think that I was the the catalyst like the reason that all of this came about so he was the one that said it so it was that you know i got to hear it out loud and basically make a long story short they ended up taking like two vials of blood they did a chest x-ray they did i think another mri they did a second ekg and the doctor met with me and all this stuff and make a long story short they did contribute it to me having anxiety kind of my first larger spout of i would say anxiety and being under a lot of stress however there was something a little bit off in my ekg which was the way basically what they were trying to do, at least this is what i think that they said i have to go to a heart doctor which we'll talk about was basically the way that the blood runs from the bottom to the top of my heart or the left to the right of my heart in some way that the blood is moving through my heart looked a little bit off so they wanted me to go see a cardiologist and do a heart go see a heart doctor and have some scans out of my heart just to make sure that everything was okay she said it's very very minuscule it's very small but it could also be triggered from the anxiety that you could be having and that's why it's doing this or it could be something else so we recommend that you see a cardiologist we'll give you a referral we'll recommend you to a doctor heart doctor so i was like okay great thank you Th you know thank you next like great so now that is on saturday sunday i'm feeling a little better every day since that day I have felt better my heart rate ebbs and flows once in a while and like last night for example on the couch it was like kind of tight however it wasn't racing however when I think about it it races more which I've talked to friends that suffer with anxiety and that's definitely something that can come about so now let's fast forward to February the 19th we had the day off and I was like getting a little bit of a scratchy throat. Corey was like under the weather a little bit, but not really. So my mom and I went to the grocery store. I got Corey some day quill, some night quill for him to like, you know, rest, feel better, whatever. And then I wake up on February 20th on Tuesday, the day that I'm supposed to go back to work for, we were, again, we were supposed to be in Canada, but instead we were in the ER and at home. And I woke up on Tuesday feeling like death. Like I felt 
horrid. I was exhausted. I was tired. I was just like my body was achy. I tried to take a shower and I was just like absolutely head over heels, exhausted, tired, wasn't eating, sensitive to smell, like just did not feel super, super great. And that day I ended up taking the day off from work because I didn't feel really good. And then as the day progressed, I was just getting like worse and worse and worse. And I was like, really? Like I just went to the ER. I just had this heart thing. Like now what is going on? And basically I ended up taking my temperature at night cause I had bone, I was like bone chilled to the core freezing. Like literally bone chillingly freezing, could not get warm. Mom took my temperature, 1037 fever. And I was like, okay, I need to cool down. I was like profusely sweating, then I was freezing. Then I was sweating, then I was freezing. And I woke up on Wednesday and took the day off. I ended up falling asleep on the couch from like 9.45 to 11.30. Like it literally in the morning after I had just woken up that Wednesday because I was so unbelievably exhausted. So I was so tired. I ended up feeling a little bit better on Wednesday. Thursday was my first day back to work. So I had about honestly a week off with the sickness, the ER and all that nonsense. So now we will get into the, yeah, the next thing. Don't worry, you guys, it's not over yet. Now let's get into the 22nd, which was the Thursday. So I start work, Corey is working for the day, and all of a sudden Corey has like a little bit of like a red eye, which some, he went to the gym that morning on the Thursday, comes back from the gym, and I was like, oh, your eye's a little bit red. And he was like, oh, I don't, I don't notice it. Now, mind you, Corey wears glasses, he wears contacts, so that's not abnormal that his eye was like a little bit red because when he puts his contacts in to go to the gym in the morning, like, it's just like his eyes are like just waking up. So when he puts his contacts in, they can be a little bit uncomfortable. So as the day goes on, his eyes getting a little bit redder, but it's nothing too crazy. And we go to sleep Thursday, he's fine. We wake up Friday, his eye is still red. Like his eye is still red, still like odd and like bright red. I'm still having a little bit of heart palpitations. We're supposed to go to New York with Corey's sister and her boyfriend for the weekend. This was like our Christmas gift. We were going to New York to see a show for the weekend. And basically Friday night, Corey's eye was like really bothering him and he was like, you know what, I, I'm gonna just go and get some like all-in-one eye drops, see if it will take away the redness and like we should be fine. I'm like, okay, sounds good. So we're having steak tacos that night. It was like the first night that I had been craving actually eating something. In about two weeks, I'd been living off of like literally grilled cheese, chips, popsicles, and pudding. Like I quite literally was a, made of a toddler and because I couldn't eat anything because I was sick and the heart rate and wasn't feeling good. And so he comes back, we put the eye drops in his eyes, we go to sit down to have tacos for dinner and I take one bite of my taco and my heart starts to race again and I am uncomfortable, I'm crying hysterically at the kitchen table, just like wanting it to end, I want it to go away, I want the heart palpitations to stop, I want the nausea to stop, I just want everything that is going on in my being to stop, I'm over it, I'm having a freak out, I'm having a breakdown. And Corey consoled me at the kitchen table for probably 45 minutes of me just literally sitting at the kitchen table, unconsolably crying, like unconsolable. It was exhausting, it was just tiring. I was trying to figure out why this just would not go away and what it was that would make it go away. And so then we ended up waking up Saturday morning getting ready to go to New York and Corey woke up and his eye was like all crusted over. And I'm like, oh my God, he must have pink eye. I'm like, there is no way that he does not have pink eye. My brother and nephew had gotten over pink eye like two weeks prior. So I said, you know what? Call Courtney, my sister-in-law. I said, go and get the prescription eye drops that they have because you can't go to New York with no prescription eye drops if you have pink eye. You'll be contagious and you need to be taking the eye drops. So, Long story short, we end up going to New York for the weekend. I'm doing okay. Corey's getting worse by the day. His eye's really bothering him. We end up going to a show at night. He's got like eye booger now in both eyes. Really uncomfortable, really red, bloodshot, swollen, like super uncomfortable. And so we wake up on Sunday and now Corey's developing a cough. Like developing a cough, congested, the eyes are red and swollen. I'm not feeling 100%, I'm barely eating. And we still had a great trip to New York. We did end up going because at the end of the day, I thought it would be really helpful to have a distraction for me and for Corey, both of us, to get out of the house and enjoy something and be just disconnected from what felt like four walls of hell, honest to God. So we go to New York and we it's about like noon, 
maybe like two o'clock in the afternoon and Corey comes up to me and he's like I feel like death he's like I am really really struggling right now he's like I am tired my eyes are bothering me I'm exhausted I feel like I'm freezing and sweating and I don't know what's going on and I'm like okay sounds good we end up having to sit in the train station for four hours waiting for our train Corey is like profusely sweating I end up going and getting Tylenol cough drops gatorades just to try to like keep him i don't want to say medicated but like he needed tylenol because i felt like he had a fever so the tylenol would break his fever and he had a really bad headache he was constantly blowing his nose from being congested he was coughing so i wanted to give him a cough drop so that it would soothe his throat and it was just an absolute awful awful ride home on the train i was super nauseous almost the first 50 percent of the train ride home we had a three hour train ride i couldn't eat anything and let me tell you Corey is the love of my life because the only thing that i could put down the last two weeks was popsicles like the two weeks before in february and in the middle of a new york train station while Corey is literally on his deathbed he comes walking over to me while I'm sitting on the ground in the train station. We have 45 minutes before our train boards and I feel like I'm gonna projectile vomit everywhere because I couldn't eat anything. And Corey found me a popsicle from an ice cream stand that literally had popsicles that was closing in two minutes. So love of my life, let me tell you, he's always thinking of me even when he is not his best. And it was just, the only thing that saved me, he got one for himself, it cooled him down. The whole train ride, he was super uncomfortable. This was Sunday night, he's like half in and out of sleep, like sweating, super uncomfortable. So I'm like, you know what, I don't know what you have, but I'll sleep with my mom tonight, just in case I am gonna get extra sick from being in the bed with you, I'll sleep with my mom. He goes, great, I made an appointment at Urgent Care on Monday morning at 8 a.m., I'll go in, get tested for pink eye, and I think I might have strep, so they're gonna test me. And I'm like, okay, sounds good. He texts me. Urgent care comes back. They go, yep, I have pink eye and I have COVID. And I'm like, oh, you have got to be kidding me. He has COVID. I'm like, are you literally kidding? So then he came home and quarantined in our room for about five days that Monday through Friday. So now we are at the week of, let's see. So now we're in COVID week, which was the 26th to the 1st is when he had had COVID and was like finally feeling a little bit better and like getting, you know, that was his COVID week was from the 26th to the 1st. He was in quarantine for five days, all day in our room. And then Saturday morning, he ended up going to the um, urgent care clinic they retested him he came back negative for COVID and was on also the entire week medicated eye drops because he had pink eye and COVID together at the same time so there was that that was the whole you know whole thing that just again kicked us out for another whole week because I was on COVID duty where I was washing everything 24 seven. I was making sure that Corey was being fed. I was making sure that I was eating. I was sleeping with my mom for a full week. I was washing clothes every single day. I was like spraying disinfectant everywhere. I was like terrified to get COVID because I didn't obviously want to get COVID. Part of me thinks I may have had it and have been the one that gave it to Corey but I'm not really sure if my 1037 fever was COVID. I never lost my taste, my smell, any of that. Corey did end up, now Corey and I have never had COVID. I've never had COVID and neither has Corey up until just now. And he said that he lost his taste and lost his smell and was just like exhausted and coughing incessantly and just like wanted it, you know, to end. So we tested on Saturday and he was negative. Fast forward through the weekend, Saturday after that, we just went and did some errands. Sunday, we went to the mall to get some fresh air and do some shopping for our upcoming vacation. And so that would bring us to March the, where are we? March the 4th. So March the 4th. And I was ready to kind of like get back on YouTube. And I was excited to get back on YouTube because my heart was feeling a little bit better. And I was like getting into a better spot. I ended up having a gynecologist appointment, so I had a doctor's appointment that week too. Talked a lot about the anxiety, and I am on birth control, I'm on Kelnor. I am a big proponent of birth control. I think birth control gets this like a really negative, bad rap on social media all of a sudden. And like, I am 100% pro whatever it is that you need to be doing in your life that you believe is best. And right now in my life, what is best for me is to be on birth control. And I've never had an IUD or the bar, I've always taken the pill. And so one of the things that they said could have also triggered my anxiety anxiety attacks uh, plural but the heart racing and all the stress could be that my birth control is also extremely hormonal so I am on Kelnor birth control my 
I've also been like getting my period for like two weeks at a clip, but they're not really heavy. They're like really light, but they're lasting for two weeks. And my gynecologist recommended that we reconnect in about like May time to see if my periods are still doing the same thing to see if it like weeds itself out. And if not, he said that we'll get me on another pill because what it could be is that the stress and the extra hormones in the birth control are like skyrocketing my hormones and that's what's making the period come and that's what's like doing more disservice so with that being said uh we ended up going live on friday with our friends caitlin and austin and brandon and heidi and that was so fun it was something that we had really looked forward to and then saturday and sunday we just laid low and relaxed and i had been wanting to vlog was gonna vlog the weekend and i just said to myself like you know what i just can't pick up the camera yet I'm not ready, I don't want to, and I wanna come back to YouTube when I feel ready, and I don't wanna put pressure on myself for YouTube because I, I'm i in a very, I don't wanna, like, I'm in a, just a weird place right now where, like even right now talking, I feel, my heart is not racing, but it feels like I need to take a really big deep breath in, like my chest needs to crack, almost like it's tight, and if it were to just snap, it would feel better, so let me take a big deep breath in, hold on. And it's like that tightness is like kind of there like almost like pain a little bit right here like from the tightness like around my chest and i'm in just a really like i would like and okay fast forward to right now march 13th i feel better every day dinner is my hardest meal of the day because i just i think i have a little bit of nervousness and some anxiety and like backening thoughts of just like eating and getting nauseous you all know that i'm terrified of throw up i'm scared to throw up i'm scared to any of that nonsense like i would rather do anything under the sun than have to throw up it's it's like one of my biggest fears in life i hate it i hate the way it makes me feel i hate the feeling of being nauseous i just hate it secondhand throwing up listening to it seeing it any of it just like completely derails me and like puts me in just a really bad place so i think that gives me a little bit of of anxiety and some heart racing the idea of eating and then throwing it back up makes me really nervous and scared so now i'm wondering as well i'm going to make some appointments with some doctors because i'm wondering if i may or may not have chronic nausea is this going to give me some motion sickness when we're on our trip and we're on rides i'm going to see i'm going to go easy um but then we fast forward to today march 13th i am feeling the best that i have felt today every day just gets a little bit better and better and I'm literally just putting one foot in front of the other. And I do feel like I'm in a really delicate state of mind right now because every day I just get nervous that the heart palpitations are gonna come back. And it's really scary and it's really debilitating and it is very nerve wracking. And I've spoken to a lot of my friends that also suffer with anxiety as well. And it's something that they recommended that I potentially, maybe I need to see it, not like in this way, but like, you know they've given me really good tips to try to cope with it and understand it and work with it however i think i'm gonna start therapy because i think it could be really beneficial for me to have an outsider opinion and just someone to talk to whether that's about the heart palpitations or the stress of planning a wedding or just all the little nuances that come about and you know it's just i'm definitely in a little bit of a delicate state of mind right now so that is where I've been and what has been going on, let's get into how am I doing now after it. Um, like I said, I'm in a really delicate place right now. I would say like mentally, emotionally, physically. Every day I, th this sounds bad, but like every day I wish for bedtime because every time I sleep, I don't have to worry about it and I don't have to worry about my heart racing and I don't have to worry about my mind going a mile a minute. And I've never been someone that sleeps through the night. So I do wake up about once or twice in the middle of the night. My brain can't go back to sleep. It's really hard for me. And so I am in a really delicate place right now. And I'm working through it every day. I get a little bit better every day. brings me a little bit more joy. And like Corey has been so unbelievably incredible and so supportive. And so is my mom and my family and my friends. Like if I have texted you, family or friends, in the last like four to five weeks like know that you were the only thing that was getting me through like it was so debilitating and so difficult and so challenging and like i said it was the hardest month i've ever had in my adult life for anyone that struggles with anxiety and rapid heart palpitations and your mind racing and like not being able to sleep and eat and like this is something that you've struggled with for years like i 
like my heart goes out to you and like I feel for you because even just having little spurts of it was so scary and so debilitating and so overwhelming that like I I can't imagine having had this before and if this is my life now like that's okay and I'm just like accepting it and you know everything happens in your life for a reason and I think my body was telling me to slow down and my body was telling me to like take a beat and my body was telling me that like you know doing YouTube full-time and sharing my life online and working full-time and going away on the weekends and like having busy moments was like I was doing too much and I am in a place now where I used to love to post three videos a week and now for the foreseeable future for the next like three to six months like really until our wedding I am just gonna post when I feel like no schedule videos will be uploaded when they're uploaded and I just have to take that pressure off of me right now because if I don't relieve one pressure like I'm I'll combust and YouTube is just gonna have to be what that pressure is right now and i'm not saying i'm going away like we're doing uh, we're talking about what's coming on the channel but like i'm just not going to hold myself to three videos a week and be like okay well i have to think of an idea because i have to get a video out right now it's more like i'm gonna do what i can do and i hope you'll all stick around and be here for the long haul i still do plan to post like two maybe three videos a week depending because i love it and this brings me joy and this has even been so cathartic to like talk about it with you guys so that is how I am doing. I'm doing better every day, one foot in front of the other. Um, like I said, like I have some tightness in my chest right now. I'm just being open and honest, but I know that it will pass. Like it comes in ebbs and flows and it is kind of, you know, what it is at this point. And I'm just taking things really slow and moving in a slow direction. And yeah, that is where I am at right now. And the other thing is how I'm doing right now, something that I am really trying to grapple with and say, out loud and I get emotional thinking it but I I am I feel like forever changed after the last month of my life in dealing with that large spout of anxiety and this like never-ending like tightness I feel like in my chest and I am gonna go to a doctor so I don't need all the medical advice in the comments but I just want to be open and honest I don't know if I'll ever be the same 100% girl that I was before based on what has happened now however I'm gonna do my best to let whoever I become and morph into like that's what I'm gonna be and I'm still gonna be chaotic and crazy and fun and that's I'm, I'm still gonna be the same person however I'm I'm learning to put myself and other things in my life first because that is what is important and now let's talk about what is coming on the channel so we've, we've got a lot coming on the channel I am gonna give myself a little bit of grace as uploads come up and a filming schedule and all that like I'm just gonna post when I want to post and hopefully in the next few months I'll get back into three videos a week but right now I'm hoping to just post things that bring me joy and when I feel like I'm in a creative space I'll jump on it and if not, I won't. You know, I really love doing the podcast. That brings me a ton of joy. So maybe I'll focus a little bit more on the podcast. And instead of three videos a week on YouTube, maybe there will be one or maybe there will be two or whatever that might be. But I'm not holding myself to a schedule anymore like I used to because I think it was very constrictive. And that is what gave me a lot of other induced like stress. Because all I kept thinking about in my mind was when am I going to get better to record a podcast? When am I going to get better to post on Instagram? And when am I going to get better to post on YouTube? And I can't do that. I can't mentally think that way because it's going to be draining and it's just like not, it's not going to be for me. So what is to come on this YouTube channel is we've got the Disney vlogs. We are still going to be vlogging our Disney trip. Some of the vlogs might be shorter, right? If I'm not vlogging all day or if I'm not in front of the camera as much. So I think these Disney vlogs are going to be just as incredible as our other ones. Some might be 15 20 minutes some might be 35 40 minutes who knows what the vlogs will be like but the disney vlogs are coming and i'm very excited for them after this video the disney series will start so you'll see a like pack and prep with me for disney and then all of the disney vlogs now the pack and prep with me is going to go up on i'm not going to i was normally going to post it before we went to disney however i'm not going to do that to myself because i want to give myself a break so this video will be up on the 17th so march 17th is when you're seeing this video my disney pack and prep with me is going to go live on tuesday the 26th and then about two to three disney vlogs will go live per week depending on how fast I can crank them out 
if I do two a week, great. If I do less, great. April is going to be a month of a lot of resting and recharging because we don't have a lot going on. However, in the month of May, we do have a lot going on. I've got my bachelorette. We've got Corey's bachelor party and just like other things that are going on with friends and family and weekends and whatnot. Like I have a doctor's appointment, my heart cardiologist appointment. So I will keep you all up to date on what is happening in that lens, but I just wanted to talk about what has been going on in my life, where I've been, how I'm really feeling, and what is next on the channel. And what you can expect on the channel is the same me, the Disney vlogs are on their way, like crazy day of my life, mundane, chaotic, oversharing, all the fun is still coming. It just might take me a little bit longer to get there, but I promise we will get there. The Disney vlogs are what are next, so I'm very excited for those vlogs to be up. And yeah, I know I was gonna cry in this video, but I just wanted to give a life update of what's been going on. It is so important that I am open and honest with all of you guys. Thank you for still being here and supporting me. If you messaged me at all on Instagram saying I miss your vlogs or commenting on old videos saying I miss your vlogs and I miss you like that also got me through because it just made me feel like so connected to all of you reaching out and looking for me and thinking of me and that brought me more joy than you will ever know so thank you so much to all of you that also reached out and were wondering where I was and what was going on but with that being said that is going to end this little video sit down hang out chatty vlog comment down below anything you want to if you've made it all the way to the end of this video thank you all so much and the next time that you see me we will be packing and prepping for walt disney world if you're watching this vlog and you don't follow me on insta go ahead and do so because i'll be posting every day my insta stories on instagram in disney so with that being said i love you guys so much thanks for being here and i will see you in the next one bye everyone